When we were in high school, we discovered that we had something in common that was very embarrassing. Hello, this is David Kim from Rancho Palos Verdes, California. Let's talk about that. Good Mythical Morning. This episode is brought to you by Aura Brush because 90% of bad breath comes from a dirty tongue. You think we'd be sitting this close together if we didn't use it? Every morning, we sit this close together. Uh, pick them up at CVS or Walmart or orabrush.com. How are you feeling? Are you, are you feeling mythical this morning, Rhett? I feel mythical every morning. That's not true. Hopefully you are feeling mythical and you're continuing to adopt us and this show into your daily routine. Thank you. Uh, thanks for telling us that you wanted this to be a podcast. We have answered your call. We have made Good Mythical Morning a podcast available as a video podcast or an audio-only podcast, podcast at iTunes. We got the links in the description. All right. We got okay. a link right here, too. Here I am. Yo, what's up, people? Okay, I remember uh, this distinctly in high school. One day, I'm just going about my own business and business as usual. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I felt something in the back of my throat, like up high, like in the tonsil area which I really didn't even realize it was a tonsil area at the time, but it was like, kind of like a sharp thing. I was like, what is that back there? And it was like, oh. you know, I started oh, doing that like a cat, oh, like a cat hocking up a hairball. Hair ball. And after, it probably took 90 minutes of like sitting up there in my bedroom oh, until- your, mo your mom's like knocking on the door. Rat, did you get a cat? Are you okay? Oh. And, and then after 90 minutes or so, this thing, all of a sudden, I, I have dislodged whatever it was. A tonsil. <laughs> Not a tonsil, but this little thing, and it's on the end of my tongue, and I think it out, and I look at it, and you know what you do? The first thing you do when something comes out of your mouth, or any part of your body, is you throw it in the you smell trash? It. You smell oh, it. Oh, my gosh. I mean, I can't help it. I mean, what it, where, I'm just like, comes out of my ear, I'm like, I don't, I don't know why, I probably shouldn't even admit that, but I smelled it, and it smelled like death. Oh, I remember, I remember you coming to school and deciding to confide in me and, and tell the story that you just told to the good viewers out there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I decided to be vulnerable. I said, you know what? I have that, too. I, I look in the mirror, open my mouth, and there's like sometimes a colony of little white dots on my tonsils. Yeah, well, we probably should have warned you guys this is going to be a gross episode. <laughs> yeah. Finish your cereal now. Listen, we have to come up with something to talk about every single morning. So sometimes it's going to be about gross, nasty stuff that happened in high school. But Get over it. But it's but but there's a level of vulnerability associated with it that is going to create a connection between us that will override the grossness. Because these things, there's a medical term for this. It's tonsillists which the layman's term for that is tonsil stones, and 10% of the population has them, and Link and I discovered that we both had these tonsil stones. And that's why we're best friends? Because yeah. of bonding moments like that? Yeah, we take our tonsil stones out and unite them together sometimes. So what I'm saying is we're simulating that con connectivity with, with you people. But my, you know, my life went on, our lives went on into college, and I was, you know, I've told you about this uh, last week, I spent a summer in Slovakia. And I was, you know... A very formative summer for you, right? Yeah, I did a lot of things. Like, I showered naked, I used very small towels, and I began telling lots of people about my tonsil stones. But I didn't know what to call them at the time, and I hadn't done any research, because this is before the internet was really like a part of life. Mm -hmm, and uh, mm -hmm. there was no Wikipedia at the time. But oh, I was talking gosh. to my good friend Garrett Moore, I was like, dude, I got these things, and I mean, they're like these little things, and like, I can hock them up, and I'll show them one. I can like get them up on command sometimes. Like calling a dog? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> come here, Tonsil Stone. That'd be a good name for a pet. No, it wouldn't. And uh, I was like, what should we call it? And he was like, I don't know, Little Fellers? So you come back from Slovakia and we decide to write a song telling the world about Little Fellers. This is many years ago, but you can still go to retlink.com slash music, scroll down to the bottom to a very early Retlink album, and you can find the song Little Fellers. Let's play just a little portion of that, just for old time's sake. Do little Fellers. I had mastered this technique of using a toothpick to actually dislodge them, pop them out. But what I didn't realize I was doing was I was making the holes bigger and bigger, so the colony started taking over. So my tonsils started to look like infested. And this is gross, people. No, you know, it's hard to live with yourself in this type of situation. I got fed up with it, 
and I decided I was gonna take drastic measures. Can I you tell you what they're composed of? Yeah. Just so people know how nasty just this get is. It o hurry, just get it over with. They are composed mostly of calcium. Oh, that's not bad, that's in milk. Hmm. Hmm. But they contain, for you. they contain many other minerals, this is on Wikipedia, such as phosphorus and magnesium, as well as ammonia and carbonate. It's like you can mine these and like sell them. Like put it on a ring? Phosphorus and magnesium, those sounds like things that should be in multivitamins. But if you take it out and put it on your windowsill, it dries up to nothing, so you couldn't really mount it like it's like a pendant. So don't even go there, people. Okay, so you I went, know what you're thinking. You went very extreme. I decided I was going to have my tonsils Removed. I was gonna go to a doctor yeah. and have them. Typically, you should. Out. When you need something like that, you should go to like not an alley, but a doctor. I set up an appointment. I go to the ear, nose, and throat, the ENT doctor, mm -hmm. and you know, I told him over the phone. You know, I got these little flaws. Like, what are those? And we're like, Oh yeah, you call them. My wife and I are like, Oh, you call them tonsil stones. So we go in there. Before I, that morning, I get up. I look in the mirror. I don't have any. Yeah, they've exited, they've evacuated. I'm like, I'm like, they knew what, they heard the phone conversation and they've gone away temporarily. They're sabotaging my whole plan. The tonsil but, stones. But I had another plan. In the parking lot, before I go in for my appointment, where the, the consultation, I brought some white bread in the car. I took little pieces of white bread, totally true, and I started rolling them up into like little hard balls and I took a toothpick and I did the reverse of what I always do and I started looking in the rear view mirror and I started placing them. You administered little fellers to yourself. And then I went in and I did it very close to the appointment so I could just go into the appointment and he's like, all right, let me take a look. And I, I open and he's like, oh my gosh, we need to remove your tonsils if he was a good, yesterday. If he was a good doctor or a baker, he would have been like, <laughs> that's bread. Yeah, it was, you know, I, I hope, I hope that the, health insurance company is not gonna come after me now and I'm gonna have to pay for this whole procedure. Yeah, you should not have admitted that. I really needed it, people, but I had to I had, I had. had to leave no question of doubt. I get the surgery done, they basically cut out, they put you under, cut out your tonsils, and then they burn it, yeah. like sear it. Mm -hmm. Cauterize, they call that. And like. then you can't drink anything but milkshakes for a whole month. Let us know in the comments if you've had your tonsils removed. Share your experience. But a week later, as the scabs are forming, they start falling off. And since I was like 22, 23 years old when I had this done, mm -hmm. it's like the worst time in your life to do it because something about how your throat bleeds. Yeah, it, throat, well, throat bleeding peaks at 23. It, Everybody knows that. No, it does. All these people know. See, you learned something here. My, I opened my mouth, looked in the mirror, and it was just like bleeding everywhere back in, there. Into your stomach cavity. I'm like about to faint. I'm Nasty. like, I'm, I'm about to die. I have to go back to the doctor. We call the doctor. He's like, go to the emergency room right now. I'll meet you there. He had to do an emergency resurgery, basically the same surgery re again. Resurgery? They had to resurgery me and cauterize everything. I get, you know? But you're okay now. I guess it's justice for what I did. The pretense of me getting the procedure, you know, I'm not going to call it karma, but. Call it what you will. Now you're you're okay now, and you don't get tonsil stones at all because you don't have any I don't have pockets. Tonsils. Hello. Now, but I still have pockets. It's like a bald. It's like it's like a bald man's head in the back of my throat. That's nasty. This has been nasty on many different levels. I'm going to tell you something. One last nasty thing. I have trained my tongue to remove tonsil stones. I can look at Rhett sometimes, <laughs> and he will have this expression on his face. It's this like, one. My wife hates it. She's like, "Quit doing that." What? It, it just looks like you're like... I can totally dig into my tonsils with my tongue. It's like, anybody could do it. You have to train yourself, though. And then he'll go... You know, it would be like an everyday conversation. And, and I'll squeaky. see this look come on his face. I'll be like, don't do that. It's squeaky clean back there right now. Go to the bathroom and do that. If one begins forming, I get it. I'm like an anteater with, a t with my tongue by there. Oh, man. It's like I have a termite mound in the back of my... In my back of my mouth and... I'm getting the pants out of it. What a great way to start your week, right? Forgive us, hopefully Hopefully there was... you're not eating like corn pops right now. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully there's some- you stopped a long time ago. Redemptive elements to this episode uh, and that you'll keep watching. If you have tonsil stones, let us know in the comments. I know it's an embarrassing thing, but 10% of the population, according to Wikipedia, has them. We'd like you to confide in us. Uh, you can get surgery, don't fake it with bread. Uh, or you can just, I suggest training your tongue to remove the tonsil stones. It doesn't cost any money, and Don't, anybody can do it. Do not do what I did, kids. I do not recommend it. Link calls his Nana. That means you have to make a phone oh, call Nana. to your grandmother right now. Oh, okay.
Okay. Hope, hopefully she's there. I mean, I gotta take my phone out of airplane mode. That's easy enough. If if she doesn't answer immediately, we might have to do a quick edit. We usually don't edit on Good Morning, Good Mythical Morning, but you know what? We can if we want to, especially when we're calling multiple phones to try to reach Link's grandmother. Hello. Hello, Nana. Hi. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. Are we're... you calling to tell me you're coming home? No, I'm sorry. I'm call we're we're doing our uh, Good Mythical Morning show and the wheel told me to call you. Oh, they did. Well, it's, well, it's, it's not it's, really they, it's a thing. Yeah, but it, it's like you, you can you can go with that. I just want to tell you that I love you and that you I wish you a good mythical morning and I also wanted to make sure that you you have you ever been on a zip line smoking a pipe holding a goat? Big <laughs> what about have you ever made uh payday candy bars at home you know it's like caramel with like peanut peanuts on it a long time ago i knew you did that and now you're yeah. receiving royalties oh uh, that would be nice and, and last thing before we go what's the sound you make when when like you're in another room and like me or one of the kids says nana where are you That's close enough. We love you, Nana, and we miss you. We're well, coming we back to North today. Carolina in June. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Just, okay. Pl just planned it. All right. Love you. Talk to you later. All right. Bye. Bye. Do you think she means uh, not permanently, just a visit? Yeah, I know. You totally got her hopes up. Oh, you, you probably need to call her back and tell her that it's just for like a vacation. I'll call her later. Thanks for watching.